Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the celebrated podcast that explores your favorite looks in film, television, and fashion history. Through conversations with the fashion world's elite and award-winning hair, makeup, and costume designers on sets around the world, you will see and hear exciting tales from behind the scenes, career origin stories, and tons of advice and tips. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Look Behind the Look. This week, we are really diving into the world of gaming, special effects, total horror. We're talking about a show called Twisted Metal, which many of you may be familiar with. Some may not. We are going to be talking to Stacy Perry, who is behind these wild designs that I'm so scared of. They are terrifying, and uh, people really, really love them who love the game, love the show. It's had season one, and... And we are waiting for season two. It's been announced that there's going to be one, but they haven't started filming yet. Soon, soon, soon. Stacy Perry herself is talking to me from Louisiana. She is a seasoned makeup artist and special effects artist. She calls New Orleans home. That's where she works and where she uh, worked on season one. Her artistic journey began at a very young age. And we're going to talk about her family upbringing, which is so kooky and cool. I just loved hearing the stories about her growth growing up and sort of making their own movies, the family would all come together and um, sort of explore their creativity and make these cute little films that were wild. And now it's become a full-blown career, as she will tell us. She's equipped with professional training. She excels in both makeup and special effects makeup, and she's showcasing her proficiency through efficient work and ongoing skill development, both as a department head and a key makeup artist. So let's dive in with Stacey Perry. You're going to love this conversation, especially if you find yourself in different areas like LA and New York are not the be all and end all for a lot of makeup artists. We love to bring on people who make it work in other cities. She's busy all the time. So if you're Louisiana based, especially, this is a really empowering talk because you'll see that there are other places in the country to really thrive in this industry. So let's get into it. I'm dying to talk to you because I, you know, I realized I never really talked to anybody in your world of like gaming, and you know this this whole my son's not a gamer and uh so you know I'm kind of like out of the out of the loop of all things you know twisted yeah. metal and your show twisted metal is a huge success and I I want to talk to you a little bit about this whole world and, and your place in it so yeah um, let's talk about how you're in Louisiana are you correct in- New okay. Orleans New Orleans okay so is that where the show is filmed That's where we filmed the first season. We're not sure about the second season, though. We're still waiting to figure that out. Okay. So is that how you found yourself on the show? Did you hear that it was coming? Or how did you find yourself in uh, the Twisted Metal universe here? (laughs) Um, Well, I was recommended to the UPM, uh, referred to him uh, by another fellow makeup artist and department head, Leah Votro. Um, And I did my uh, quick interview, and that was that. And oh, we done deal. Yeah. 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 We just kind of jumped right into it. And um, I got really lucky. Um, you know, we needed, there was enough stuff going on in this show that we needed to have two departments, uh, special effects makeup and a makeup department. Okay. So, um, and then I recommended my good friend, Lana Mora, who is an, also a wonderful local uh, to New Orleans makeup uh, department head. And I mean, we just hit the ground running. It was great. Oh, amazing. So you get to work with your friend on this. like, Yeah. I mean, that's one thing about being in New Orleans and working there is that everyone knows everyone. So you're lucky enough to get to work with your friends all the time. Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. Yeah. Because we never get to see each other in this creative world. I feel like it's always like one person per job and then, you know, you you just meet out, you know, in extracurricular activities. (laughs) So, yes, correct. Um, and we're lucky we get to do both. So that's fantastic. So, yeah. so um, tell me how you got into special effects. I mean, because you your portfolio was probably what secured this in two seconds. It's extensive, and you've you've always Thanks. been living and breathing in this in this skill and this talent. Well, um, I mean, my both of my brothers are actors. I have an older oh. brother, and, and he's been acting since I was a kid. And so I was always kind of roped into creating things with him. You know, I, um, I can remember being really, really young and him filming like this big horror scene where I get my 
neck cut. My and, and I mean, I remember from back then going, this is really cool. And so, so, so did he say you're going to do this? And you, like, like, how did, did was he the director? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's he's the director as well. So, I mean, yeah, he's always had that in him, too. It's like, here, you're going to do this and this. Well, OK. Yeah. And I mean, we've always just kind of worked on stuff together for a really long time. And um, we had this great little TV show um, that was, gosh, it was so much fun to do. Um, it was uh, MC Outdoors that it played on Fuel TV. It was like in 2006, maybe I think we filmed it. Fun! And I mean, it was me, both of my brothers. And um, yeah, I got to do all, all the makeup. And I also got to do a lot of like special effects, um, like not only just makeup, but like props and stuff like that. So it was a lot of creating and trying to figure out how to rig certain things. And I mean, that from there it was just like, okay, this is absolutely what I want to do. And it was, it's just been fun ever since. Do you, uh, did, did you, um, was this like, to be clear, was this like public access or like, what, what do you yeah. mean you had to show? I love that. Yeah, it was great. They both, well, my, my oldest brother directed it. I think he had a cameo in the the season finale um but my little brother was one of the stars in it and uh, yeah it was it was a lot of fun it was like um what's it called I'm trying to think there was like the bigger um the bigger show so it was like a mini show in a show oh okay yeah kind of yeah. like when we would watch cartoons and there would be like a five minute preview of another show or something like Correct. that do you yeah, have it, it available the... on YouTube or anything did you I think it is still on I YouTube love that. I think it is. I think that it was up there for a while. I'm not sure if they pulled it down and then put it back up again. But yeah, it was it, it was so much fun to film. I mean, we filmed in LA all over the place. And yeah, that's it was, fun. It was great. We you and your two brothers. Yeah, I mean, you could, can't ask for better than that. <laughs> oh my gosh. And are, where do you fall in the line? Is it, it's two older I'm brothers? the middle sister. You're the middle. The middle okay. Sister, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they're both actors working now. And oh yeah. my gosh. Okay. So what are, what were you, what were your parents? What, how did you grow up? Were they creative as well? Yeah. So my mom is actually a costume designer, not in the industry. She's just a costume designer. Wow. Um, we used to be, you know, being from Louisiana, we were in all of the Mardi Gras pageants and stuff like that. So we always had all the costumes and stuff like wow. that. And then my dad, I mean, he was um, a draftsman. So he had those skills as well. So, I mean, we did grow up in a very artistic family. That's so amazing. we've been very, very lucky. Yeah. And, and they've, they've always, always been, been supportive. very supportive. Yeah, absolutely. When did you find yourself like doing this? Like, what was that evolution like? You, you... <sighs> I mean, you know, so there was a lot of day playing and uh -huh. kind of getting, um, especially like coming from Los Angeles, you know, in Los Angeles, you just kind of like work on everything you can possibly work on. And then moving back to New Orleans, when the industry kind of picked up in there, in that area, it was a lot of day playing and kind of getting people to know you. Um, so you went, from, I know you went from Louisiana to LA and then got your got it going on on in LA and then came back to NOLA when it was really like popping right okay, when it started it. well yeah I mean yes and no I mean there we went through a big phase of uh like a it was pretty slow because they had kind of taken our tax credits away for a little oh, while right I remember that mm -hmm. yeah and then like when it came back I mean we we pretty much hadn't stopped it was non-stop work up until the strikes I mean wow. like wow I went literally from one trailer to the next trailer there was Amazing. no break in between yeah it was so good so oh, good wow so the strike how did you get through the strike how, how were you affected um I, yeah we were all really mm -hmm. affected pretty pretty badly um as a matter of fact I mean I know that I was one of the lucky ones who worked up until July mm -hmm. whenever um SAG also started to strike mm -hmm. um but I mean a lot of my friends hadn't at that time hadn't worked for almost a year okay because everything was kind of slowing down because yeah. they knew it was coming yeah and yeah. so I mean for me you know I'm lucky enough that I have other businesses and other things that I do okay um you know I'm a, a face and body painter mm -hmm. so I was able to kind of you know do that and I have other businesses that I I can kind of fall back on so I'm lucky in that sense whereas obviously not a lot of people are sure yeah, yeah. So, so were you working on Twisted Metal when the strike was called? 
No. No, we actually filmed it filmed Twisted Metal, I think, in the summer of 2022. So Got last it. year, I was in the middle of filming um, an untitled marine project. Oh. Uh, is what it's called. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, we were right in the middle of filming that. And um, hopefully, you know, we were supposed to start up again, uh, like next week, but that pushed uh, to okay. May. Okay. So they're doing some revamping of some stuff. But yeah. Okay. Not, I'm, you know, I'm it's, really it's, curious it's about something to look forward to. I'm really curious about what Untitled Marine Project is. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> sure if, I, if I'm allowed to talk about it, so I won't. But um, I think it I can was, get, I think I can. Get. Yeah, it was. It was also a lot of fun. I mean, I've been really lucky. I think every show that I've done, I'm just like, wow, this is great. Yeah. Well, it seems like you really love your job, which is crazy to me because I'm terrified of your job. It seems so <laughs> scary. I am scared of all of it. So tell me like now let's get into like, this is a whole world that's already established. So what is that like walking into that with these diehard fans and like, you know, this community yeah. that's already built? Is it into So that was... That was, I think, our biggest concern, you know, for Alana and myself is like, okay, well, yeah. this has such a huge following, we don't want to mess anything up, right? you know, and it was really important to kind of get all of those characters accurate and as, as right as we could. And, you know, I think just having such a supportive team mm. and even, even like the showrunner and the writers and everything made it made it pretty easy to kind of get through all of that and uh, and how did you, know, you find how did you find them being supportive like when you need something they provide they collaborate with you creatively both both of yeah. those things i mean we basically we were able to have an um I guess blessing and a curse because who has time to have all of these meetings but we were <laughs> also lucky enough to yes. have we you know we would have the production meeting for each episode, but we'd also have a special effects makeup meeting and we'd have nice. a makeup meeting and okay. the hair and makeup together. So, I mean, I was, I was sitting through at least two of those meetings, you know, I would sit through the makeup one and the special effects makeup one and really be able to get into detailed information on what this character is supposed to be like, you know, what their vision is, what my vision is. And, you know, together we were able to just kind of put it all together. Was there anything that you saw differently and then had to kind of work through? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we kind of all had a lot of the same ideas. I think that we're all around the same age. So had a, a lot of the same influences growing up as sure. far as movies. You know, there's a character, um, Loud, uh, which is Stephanie Beatrice's brother in the in the show, and he gets killed. Spoiler alert! But he comes back, and when he comes back, like to kind of haunt her, you know. My question was, okay, so is this like American Werewolf in London style, where he kind uh -huh. of gets worse? And I mean, they knew instantly. They're like, yes, yes, that's it. Okay, so we kind good. of all were on the same page for most everything. I can't really remember anything where there was a pushback. On, right. on anything. Nice. Um, I think the only the only look that we kind of went back and forth with a little bit was the clown looks of um, Stu, not not um, Sweet Tooth because okay. his look was set. Okay, <laughs> but <laughs> towards the end in the finale, you know, he kind of puts makeup on two of the characters, and it was what that makeup was really going to look like, you know. Uh -huh. um, and my my face and body painting background, I'm like, oh, is this supposed to be like the perfect clown makeup to kind of match him? But no, it's supposed to be like totally rough. Uh -huh. Like he takes takes his hand and just goes and <laughs> smears right. it on him, basically. Right, because you're saying so, something about his character with that, right? Okay, exactly. I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, but that's I think that's the only thing we kind of went back and forth on a little bit. Sorry about that. No, no problem. And um. Uh, but other than that, like I said, it was all very, um, very smooth and nice. Yeah. Nice. And, and, and so how does this lend itself to other work? Like, do people say like she, well, of course you have special effects down on lock, but like, do what if you want to ever, I don't know if you ever want to leave that world, but what if you wanted to do something on, you know, a, a show that is like a modern 
not modern, what is the word I'm looking for? Like, you know, a contemporary show. Sure, sure. And that happens to me a lot of times where I think that people think that that's all that I do. Yeah. That's all that I'm interested mm-hmm, in. Mm-hmm. Again, luckily in New Orleans, because everyone knows everyone, they know that I do regular makeup as Got well. It. So, um, and I've been, you know, I've department headed just your, I guess, I hate to say basic shows, but you know, no, I know exactly what you mean. I know a lot of special effects in them. Um, and so that helped me a lot. I think it would be more if I wanted to work elsewhere, that it would be kind of establishing that I like I can do, I can do both. And, um, so I try not to get too pigeonholed into just special effects makeup, but right, that right, is right. where, that is where I have the most enjoyment. Yeah. 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 Is this the first, um, series that you have department headed? No, no. Okay. No. So what, what are um, the shows? Series. I mean, series, yes. Um, okay, I've, that's what, I've that's what I thought. Other, other movies, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. And yeah. then, and and what are the differences between working on a series and a movie? Anything? I mean, for me, I guess the only difference where I find it uh, that you have, uh, I guess, bigger challenges is whenever we have different um, directors for each episode. Sure. Okay. Got it. And how's that? I always am curious about that. I really am. And nobody really ever tells me the truth. Is it, (laughs) is it different when someone else is on set or there's certain things that this one cares about over that one or absolutely. What's an example of that? I mean, I think that they have a lot of different styles Uh. of directing And so, whereas one director may want a lot of input from what you think, maybe another one doesn't even think about that. Got it. Um, And like, so for me, that is, you know, I think, uh, and a lot of times at the beginning, and especially for like Twisted Metal, before that director starts, that's your time to really get all of the uh, questions answered that you have. Because once they get into it, I find a lot of times they are just in their own zone. Right, right. And right, it's kind of right. hard to snap them back out and like, well, wait, 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 this doesn't work because uh-huh. of this. Um, so, uh, and I think that you have, again, you have directors that are more open to stopping, listening to what you have to say, whereas other ones are like, oh, no, we just have to get this. Got it. So anytime, anytime I'm watching a, a, a show, it's really funny. You know, when I first started out, it's hard not to watch a show and critique everything. Sure. And I remember in the beginning of my career, I was like, oh, I can't believe they did that. And then as time goes you on, see what happened. I go, oh, well, that's because they had to get that shot and they didn't give them time to go in and get less looks or whatever, you know? And it's like, oh, it's much more forgiving now. Right? I know. It, it, you People always think that, you know, knowing all this behind the scenes stuff that it's going to make me not be able to like, um, you know, forgive anything, but I find myself to be more forgiving, you know, like, yeah. oh, clearly that was like, that was the emotion they wanted. That was the take, the emotion in the take. And that's the one that the makeup artist is going, why did you do that to me? Uh, yeah it's like oh so that was the time that they waited you know 12 hours before they put this person on who now has bags under their eyes and there's nothing you can do about it it's like oh yes yes that's what happens here oh my god oh it's the last shot of the day yes 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 After exactly 16 hours they just they in just prosthetics yes exactly oh my never gosh. failed what has been some of the biggest challenges that you've come across like where you were you ever just like oh today sucks <laughs> how oh, am I def- definitely this? definitely I mean I've gotten um a lot of times you know you, you get uh pieces from uh, an effects house out that's oh, outside okay. of course and when you get them in it's like how the hell am I going to make this work? Because it's not what you discussed or, I mean, uh-huh. that happens, that happens a lot or it's the wrong colors and you're like, Oh, okay. I have to f- figure out the scheduling time to make sure somebody is covering set while I'm fixing this or vice versa oh, you have to, find sure. somebody to help fix it or how to figure out how to make it work. Sure. Um, 
that happened a few times to us. Or I mean, gosh, the one of the things that happened that was horrible was we got this. <laughs> we got Sweet Tooth's uh, one of the rigging for Sweet Tooth's um, machete scenes where he gets. Uh, I think it was he stabbed somebody through the chest, so the machete is sticking out the back of the person. Okay. So we got that rigging in, and we opened it up, and the entire machete fell apart. Oh no! Like bro- broken half. And this and is like, the day you're shooting it. Th- th- I think two days before. God. So that that shot did not get uh, didn't get done. You know, because uh, okay. we, there was nothing we could do. Yeah. We couldn't put it back together. It was. It was done. Yeah. So we just had to fake it, you know? Right. And, and right. Right. I find that that's probably specifically special effects makeup, that those are some of the hardest things, the biggest challenges that I ever have. Because now I thinking about that situation, I would think that's also art department, right? So like, is there ever, like, there, you guys- was, there was a lot of, um, I guess, lines that kind of were blurred uh-huh. specifically sure. for like twisted metal. Um, you know, and, and they, it happens a lot for other shows as well. You know, like we, we were in charge of all of the, the dead bodies. So, and that happens sometimes and sometimes it doesn't, but I mean, every dead body that you see in Twisted Metal was supplied by our department. By your um, department? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Um, you know, props at the time, they were like, we just have too much, too much to do. And we don't have enough people to do it. And they were like, can, can you guys do that? And I'm like, I guess we can. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Isn't this funny? I mean, just the sentence. It makes me laugh when you, you say we were in charge of dead bodies. Like, this is your life. This is, but yeah. it's been your life for a long time. So it's <laughs> oh, all yeah, yeah. very familiar to you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, yeah, we we had all, the, you know, the lines were blurred there. Same thing with, um, well, I mean, props a lot of times set deck even we kind of crossed over into that a little bit um wow. but luckily i mean we just all kind of pitched in and helped each other out because we all you know we all want it to be a success yeah yeah and it and it, it is a huge success right yeah. i mean it's like 93 percent of audience score on rotten tomatoes and like everybody i mean that's an accomplishment in itself for like a yeah culture to sort of like approve of what you're doing right so that must feel really good oh yeah yeah, yeah. we um I was really, I, I, I just had a feeling that it was going to be mm. successful just based on the scripts alone. Nice. I mean, uh, like, I just remember reading those scripts while I was on another show, like in between their takes and everything. And I just remember laughing out loud and I was like, oh, good. I, I don't remember the last time I was this and, you know, uh, pulled in by a script. Yeah. And, yeah. and, um, so I That's kind such of a knew great that feeling. it was going to be, yeah, exactly. So, you know, you're going in with some, a good, a good base, you know? Yeah. And, and that was kind of, that was nice. And so you're not shooting now, but it, it's going to have a season two. Yeah. It's going to have a season two. I, I spoke to the showrunner, I guess, maybe two weeks ago. And they Fantastic. just said they're just in the first parts of planning season two. So that I, is awesome. Hopefully, and hopefully it comes back to New Orleans. You know, I think the city really needs it and uh, all well, of us in that community. Well, yeah. I mean, it has to, right? I mean, they have to have all the same people. What if they couldn't get the same people if they moved it? So, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. I, uh, and a lot of times this happens for people who have never filmed in Louisiana before. You know, they're not prepared for the weather that we have. Tell me about that. It, it, the heat. it comes as a shock. I mean, it's not just the heat. Uh, no, don't get me wrong. We were in the summertime and it was hot. Yeah. It was probably the hottest summer that I've ever shot through. Really? And I've shot through four summers in a row. Jeez. It never fails. We always get a summer show. And, and the, the, after we finish, we go, we're not doing that again. And then we get a summer show. Dang it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's like on top of the heat you also have rain and our sets for twisted metal i mean they got flooded two times oh no yeah because we we had this one great outdoor set and it looked so good and i think it was like our first week of filming i want to say maybe our second day and i mean we had to shut down for the day oh no because all the stuff was floating floating (laughs) Oh my god! Oh so, you know, my that, god! 
coupled with, you know, lightning delays, uh, flooding, the heat. And, you know, in Louisiana, they always say, you know, you can experience all four seasons in one day. And that's, that's not an exaggeration. It could happen. (laughs) <laughs> yes, I, I, I've been to Louisiana, but I made a, a movie about somebody who is from there, um, Kevin O'Quan. Oh, yeah, and Kevin he, O'Quan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's he was, um, but he was in um, Lafayette. So I, I oh, that's where I, I'm from originally. Oh, wait, are you really? Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. Um, yeah. So so I, I love it there. And I but I've never had like a project or a film there, um, you know, like shooting there. But I hear so many stories like that, but, oh yeah, oh my goodness. That's, that's, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. To have your mm-hmm. stuff floating away, but I'm, sh- I'm <laughs> sure there's insurance and all this stuff that they have to deal with. Right. Too. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. And I mean, our luckily like Anthony Mackey, you know, he's from yeah. new Orleans. So oh, is he? yeah. And then cool. he lives there. And I think that that's going to, you know, he'll have a little bit of weight behind him to say, no, I want to yeah. keep it here. Cause that's where we, sh- why we shot there to begin with was okay. because he wanted to be home. Nice. And um, so I think that that hopefully will kind of, you know, hold some ground where we can just kind of all just keep filming there. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And, and tell me a little bit about, um, you know, your other, like when, when you're not working on a show, what are the other things that you do? You body paint and, and do, you said you have other things and I want to know what they are. Well, I, <laughs> we have, my husband and I own um, like a screen printing business. So oh, cool. we do screen printing t-shirts and stuff like that. Oh, cool. Um, we also have a rage room what where, you know, <laughs> where people go and they break stuff. So <laughs> like on like on reality shows when they have the therapy and then they yes. they send them in there and they go and break. I yeah. love this. How did you come up with that idea? Well, it's kind of funny. We um we were supposed to do like an escape room. Okay. Back when, but like before escape happening. rooms were really big. Yeah, sure. it was right before it. You know, and we had we're like, okay, yeah, we could do this because both my husband and my oldest daughter are like escape room junkies. They love it, so they're like, we could do it. And then we realized, no, we can't because <laughs> we don't really know what we're doing. To, to build it. That was the, the hang up. Like, actually right. Well, the- actually, I mean, some of the stuff I, I built most of the rooms out, like, um, like fake walls, fake brick walls. Oh and my God. I, we actually had, I think, two of the rooms built out. But then when it came down to figuring out the timing of the puzzles and what puzzles to do and how to do that. We were just like, we have no clue. Oh I mean, my God, in hindsight, hilarious. we should have just paid somebody because you could do that. You know, you could pay somebody to like figure out your puzzles and get it all worked out. There's like a, a consultant, like I'm exactly. In escape- yeah. <gasps> so we should have done that, but we did not We are just like, okay, so now what? And we're like, well, guess we could just, to a rage room because it doesn't cost anything to set up and we already have all the rooms this is i want to come and do that it's a lot of fun yeah we they have like uh where you the rage room where you break stuff we do axe throwing and um like splatter paint so again i had to throw a little artistic side in there of course (laughs) i i i love this i also feel like you should have like crazy clowns chasing people like just like a halloween must be an insane time for you guys you know, it's you don't oh, do for, it because it me, feels like work. I, no, it's not that it's that I'm usually working. Okay, that's that usually makes what sense. it is. I think this was the first Halloween that I haven't worked in years. Oh my god, so it's like my kid's like, Well, here's my costume. She sent it to me like <laughs> six months before, so I make sure that I have it because I'm usually not there. Wow, like, okay, got it all for you. You're ready to go. Oh, um, I love yeah. it. But yeah, it's funny that you're saying that the clowns with uh, the rage room, that's our our first t-shirt that I designed was a uh, killer clown on the t-shirt. Of course. (laughs) Face your fears. Yeah. Of course. I mean, there actually must be some truth to that psychology of the rage room. I mean, it must be really therapeutic for some people who've really been through trauma and stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, a lot of times we have like an intake email where they Mm. tell us why they're coming and (gasps) there's some really very heart touching and sad, tra- very tragic reasons that people go in, and it does seem to help them a lot. So Dude, this is a nice show. I'm sorry, you, who call someone? You, this is a show. Like you, right? Yes, like 
the people and why they come there and what they mm -hmm. get through. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. That's really nice. That's cool. Do you ever go in there like with your husband and just like, just get in a fight? I would love to do that with my husband. <laughs> we actually don't go in there as often as we do. And I think it's because we had to do it so much to like get content. Oh, and, um, oh yeah. I bet. So it's like, I just remember like the first time before we even really had it all set up, it was literally like one day we were doing an escape room and the very next day we pivoted to let's do a rage room. Wow. So it's like piecing together stuff that we just went and found to film videos of us breaking stuff. Oh and, my God, uh, how fun. And who was yeah. filming it? Your, your kids? N no, Each actually other. my oldest kid did film some of it. Cause I mean, she's, she's an adult. Um, she's, <laughs> my kid, but she's all grown up. Um, so yeah, she, and she actually our a uh, social media person. So nice. she takes care of all the content now. So I don't have to go do that anymore. <laughs> I'm waiting for that day. I'm like telling my son, I will pay you money. He's like, I, know. I, just, uh, I just, I don't know. And I'm like, oh, it's killing oh my me. Gosh. So that's I'm waiting my, for that day. That's my youngest. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she's just like, grow eh. out of it. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> I'm like, why don't you want money? I don't want... <sighs> anyway. Um, that's, that's amazing. Cause I feel like you guys have just this family affair vibe for everything. Cause that's how you were raised. That's great. Yeah. This yeah. is a show. I'm sorry. Calling all people who make shows. This is like <laughs> your whole family. I love this. Um, oh, well, Stacey, it was amazing to talk with you. I, where can yeah, we find same. out about all your stuff? Um, my website, stacyperry.com. Stacey um, I also, I also have, um, Instagram and all those good guys, Twitter, and it's all at the Sta T H E S T A H, which is my nickname that my brothers gave me. Um, I love that. So I've just embraced that one. But when and I then, see um, it, when I see it on social, I, I say the star, like the star, you know what I mean? <laughs> I like, like that. I like, like that. TV, it's like the star. I like it too. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I never thought about it that way. That works out. Double, there you go. Double there meaning. Go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. And and your show is on which streamer? Which it's on Amazon. Prime. Peacock. Peacock. That's right. It's on That's Peacock. right. Okay. Yep. Just I wanted to to hear that straight from you because I will say the wrong one and God forbid. <laughs> so that's on Peacock and we're going to be looking out for season two season and hopefully two. I will be talking to you again when that comes out. Yeah. I look forward to it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stacy. Thank you. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok, produced by Jace Bartok and edited by Nicole Tucker. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.